Welcome to this RealStar workflow training video. Here we will show you an example of the workflow combination to be used with Altona Diagnostics RealStar real-time PCR products. In this part, we will demonstrate how to perform the nucleic acid extraction of samples in preparation for the use of a RealStar PCR kit. For our example, we will be using the Kaya Amp Viral RNA Mini Kit. Before you begin to process your samples, please read the manufacturer's instructions for use for both the extraction chemistry and the real star kit in full. By reading the instructions for use, you'll avoid any unnecessary interruptions in your workflow. Prepare all the necessary equipment. For example, does your extraction chemistry require any preparation, like adding ethanol? Do any kit components need to be thawed? Do you need additional materials, such as tubes, which are not provided in the kit? Do you have the required centrifuge at hand? Now calculate the reagents and materials that you need for your set of samples. Please make sure to include one water sample, the extraction negative control, which will allow you to monitor possible contaminations or irregularities when you analyze your PCR run. Label the spin columns and elution tubes so that you can trace each and every sample back to its original material at any given time. Now you are good to go. Start with the lysis and inactivation of the potential infectious sample material. Make sure you have all locally required safety measures in place. Wear your lab coat and safety gloves and work in a safety cabinet. Next. Mix the carrier RNA and internal control tubes briefly with a vortex mixer. Then spin them down to avoid spilling any drops of liquid that may be in the lid. Pipette the lysis buffer, the real star internal control, and the carrier RNA into a new labeled tube. After placing the lysis mixture in the prepared tubes, add the recommended volume of sample material and mix well by pipetting up and down. Let the mixture incubate for 10 minutes at room temperature. Proceed with the protocol for the nucleic acid extraction as described in the instructions for use. Have the real star instructions for use at hand to remind yourself at which point you need to follow the extraction recommendations. For example, the additional centrifugation step should last one minute if a wash buffer containing ethanol is being used, as in our demonstration. When you reach the elution step, make sure to use the new labeled tubes that you prepared initially. After the final centrifugation step, discard the column and close the tubes containing the eluates securely. You can either store the eluates at minus 20 degrees Celsius or immediately proceed with the PCR setup. If possible, use separate areas for the nucleic acid extraction and the PCR setup. In this part, we will demonstrate how to use a real star PCR kit. Before starting the PCR setup, you should go through the real star instructions for use and prepare all the necessary components. Make sure that you have all the equipment you need at hand. You will require adjustable pipettes, a vortex mixer, and DNA's RNA's free disposable pipette tips with filters, along with a waste bin, a tube, for preparing the master mix and a PCR plate. Make sure that any instruments you use have been installed, calibrated, checked, and maintained according to the manufacturer's instructions and recommendations. Prepare a box with ice for the reagents before taking the real star kit out of the freezer. Compare the kit content with the instructions for use. Carefully take the required reagents out of the kit box and place them on ice. Repeated thawing and freezing of the reagents more than twice should be avoided, as this might affect the performance of the assay. The reagents should be frozen in aliquots if they are to be used intermittently. Calculate the reagents and materials needed for your set of samples. Please make sure that you include a non-template control by using the PCR grade water provided, which serves as the negative control in the PCR run. 
also include the negative control from your nucleic acid extraction and the positive control or controls from the Real Star kit. When calculating the amount of reagent required, make sure to include one extra reaction as a pipetting surplus. Wait until all reagents and samples have been thawed completely. Then, mix the kit components by gentle vortexing and centrifuge them briefly to make sure that all the liquid is gathered at the bottom. Pipette Master A and Master B into a tube prepared for the master mix according to the calculation. Start with the higher volume. In our example for nine reactions, we first pipette 135 microliters of Master B and then add 45 microliters of Master A. Mix the master mix by gentle vortexing and centrifuge it briefly. Prepare a pipetting scheme for your plate setup. Pipette 20 microliters of the master mix into each required well of the PCR plate. Do not miss a well and avoid touching the rim with the tip when pipetting into the wells. Then add one microliter of internal control into the wells of the kit controls. In our example, there is one negative and one positive control. Add 10 microliters of the positive control and 10 microliters of water for the negative control into the respective wells. Then add 10 microliters of each sample into the respective wells. Make sure to use a fresh filter tip for every pipetting step. Thoroughly mix the samples and controls with the master mix by carefully pipetting up and down a few times. Precisely seal the plate with strips. You need to put at least one strip on the left side and one on the right side of the PCR plate to ensure that the cycler lid applies even pressure across the plate. If possible, use a separate room for the amplification step. In this part, we demonstrate how to program and start the PCR run. You need to centrifuge the PCR plate in a centrifuge with a microtiter plate rotor for 30 seconds at approximately 1,000 g-force or 3,000 revolutions per minute. This way, all the liquid collects at the bottom of the wells. Now you are ready to start the PCR run. First, open the CFX Manager software. In the new window, select the instrument you are using, which in our example is the CFX 96 Deep Well. Then select User Defined Run Type. To program the temperature profile on your cycler for the first time, select Create New in the window that opens. To select the correct temperature profile, please refer to the instructions for use for your Real Star product. Enter the sample volume of 30 microliters. Edit the protocol by clicking on the respective temperatures and times. Enter the correct values according to the instructions for use. Select Insert Step After and Insert Step for the initial denaturation following the reverse transcription. Make sure that the acquisition, indicated with the camera symbol, is set to the correct cycling step. To add a step, Highlight the step before and click Insert Step. Change the number of cycles to 45 by adding 44 cycles. Once you are done with the settings, check the summary below to see if all settings are correct. The Go To arrows must be in the correct position, going from the 72 degrees Celsius step back to 95 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. This way, you ensure that your cycling conditions are set correctly. Click OK to proceed. A new window opens where you can save the protocol as a template for future runs using the same assay or the same temperature profile. Click Next to set up the plate content. Select Create New in the window that opens. A new window will open where you will first set the applicable plate type. When using a white plate, go to Settings slash 
plate type, slash BR white. Highlight the wells in use and click on Select Fluorophores. Then select the fluorophores according to the instructions for use. Please be aware that VIC is selected for the Joe die. Confirm by clicking OK. Highlight the wells in use. When you have selected a sample type, you can name the targets for the different dies and click Load by ticking the Load box or by pressing the Enter button on your keyboard. For each well, enter a sample name and make sure to assign the correct sample type as Positive Control, No Template Control, or Unknown. Then click Load so that the name is displayed in the highlighted well. Click OK, name the template, and save. Click Next and Open Lid. Place the PCR plate into the thermocycler and close the lid. Click Close Lid and wait until the lid is fully closed. Start the run by clicking Start Run and select a folder for saving the run file. In this part, we demonstrate how to analyze the PCR run. Once the run is finished, you can analyze the results. If multiple PCR assays were run simultaneously on one PCR plate, each assay must be analyzed separately by the user according to the instructions for use of the respective assay. To do this, all assays on a PCR plate must be assigned to individual well groups in the CFX Manager DX software by the user. In the Data Analysis window, click the Plate Setup button in the toolbar and select View slash Edit Plate. The Plate Editor dialog box appears. Click Well Groups in the toolbar. The Well Groups Manager dialog appears. Well Groups allow you to analyze results for different assays individually in case you want to run more than one assay on the same plate. Click the Add button and type the name of the first assay in the text box. Then select all wells in the PCR plate area that belong to the first assay. Repeat this for all assays on the PCR plate if applicable. Confirm the well group assignment by clicking OK. Close the Plate Editor dialog by clicking OK. Then apply the changes by clicking Yes. Analyze each well group individually. A menu will pop up when you right-click on the marked upper left corner of the PCR plate field. There, go to Well Label and then Sample Names. This will display the individual sample names in each well. To set the threshold for the internal control, untick the FAM checkbox so only the VIC checkbox is ticked. Then go to Settings and select Baseline Threshold. In the pop-up window, select Baseline End to sort all wells. Highlight the wells with a baseline end smaller than 10, if there are any. Continue by setting the end to 45 and confirm the settings by clicking OK. An IC signal should be present for all samples. If there is any sample with a flat IC, please note the sample name. A high specific nucleic acid load in the sample can lead to a reduced or absent internal control signal. Please refer to the results interpretation chapter in the instructions for use. Select the negative and positive control wells in the plate view of the Data Analysis window. 
Then, drag the threshold line into the exponential area of the control signals. At the left side of the Data Analysis window, untick the VIC checkbox and tick the FAM checkbox. Then go to Settings and select Baseline Threshold. In the pop-up window, select Baseline End to sort all wells. Highlight the wells with a baseline end smaller than 10, if there are any. Continue by setting the end to 45 and confirm the settings by clicking OK. To set the threshold for the specific target, select the positive and negative controls in the plate view of the data analysis window. Drag the threshold significantly above the signal of the negative control into the exponential area of the positive control signal. If you want to create a result report, you can go to the tab Quantification Data and sort your samples and detection channel order to your liking. Next, select the Tools menu and go to Reports. The Report Generation window will open. On the left-hand side, you can unselect all the unnecessary data to keep your report slim and include only the information important to you. Now your PCR test results are complete and the reports are ready for further use. Thank you for watching this RealStar training video. For more information about our products, please visit the Altona Diagnostics website.